Topological decomposition avoids direct measurement of geometric environmental qualities. It concentrates on characteristics that are most relevant to robot localization. Topological representation is a graph that specifies nodes, areas in the world, connectivity arcs, and denotes adjacent pairs of nodes. Adjacency is at the heart of the topological approach. Nodes are not of a fixed size or specification of free space. Nodes document an area based on any sensor discriminant. Some models are very elaborate. They take a long time to construct. These are kept around for a long time throughout the lifetime of the robot. For example, a detailed metric map. Other models are simple can, and they can be quickly constructed. In general, they are transient and can be discarded after use. For example, information related to the immediate goals of the robot, avoiding an obstacle or opening a door. Using models requires a significant amount of computation. Construction is the more complex the model, the more computation is needed to construct the model. Maintenance is models need to be updated and kept up to date or they become useless. Use of representations means that complexity directly affects the type and amount of computation required for using the model, and different architectures have different ways of handling representation. Autonomous map building or SLAM. A robot that localizes successfully has the right sensors for detecting the environment and the robot ought to build its own map. Starting from an arbitrary initial point, a mobile robot should be able to autonomously explore the environment with its sensors, gain knowledge about it, interpret the scene, build an appropriate map, and localize itself relevant to, relative to this map. When the robot does not have a map and does not know where it is, and chooses to build a map as it is going along in order to localize, this is called simultaneous localization and mapping. SLAM is also referred to as concurrent mapping and localization, or CML. Simultaneous localization and mapping is one of the most difficult problems specific to mobile robot systems. SLAM is one of the most difficult tasks in robotics because it is based upon the interaction between the position updates it uses to localize and the mapping actions. SLAM is difficult because it involves having the robot perform two ongoing and related parallel processes. There is confusion among multiple places that look similar and therefore ambiguous. This is the data association problem of uniquely associating the sense data with absolute ground truth. For topological maps, the robot has to contend with uniquely identifying landmarks. For metric maps, the robot has to contend with odometry error and other sensor measurements. It would be nicer if the robot had the map in order to localize or if the robot can localize when building a map. If the robot updates its position based on an observation of an precisely known feature, the result's position estimate becomes correlated with the feature location estimate. The map becomes correlated with the position estimation if an observation taken from an imprecisely known position is used to update or add a feature to the map. The complete and optimal solution has to consider correlations between position and feature location estimation. Cross-correlated maps are called stochastic maps. Coverage and exploration. There are two coverage problems based upon whether the ro robot has a map or not. If the robot has a map, the robot searches all navigable spaces until the goal point is found. This is a search problem and there are algorithms to compute in computer science and AI that are rather slow, but they do perform this, for example, A star and D star. Some search algorithms use heuristics or rules of thumb that help guide and speed up a search. When the robot does not have a map, it has to move in a systematic fashion to find what it's looking for. Mapping the environment first may be a better approach, approach but that takes time. One heuristic when the map is not known is to follow continuous boundaries or spiral out from a starting point. The robot may also move randomly and give enough time, given enough time in a closed environment, it may cover the space. Exploration attempts to answer the question, where haven't I been? How do you cover an unknown environment efficiently? One method is random search or using a random potential field and after a long period of time, the area will be covered. Also, use an occupancy grid to explore unknown areas. There are two basic exploration methods. They are frontier-based and generalized Voronoi graph. When a robot enters a new area, there is a boundary between each area that has been sensed and is open and the area that has not been sensed. Boundaries are lines that form a frontier that should be explored. This graphic here shows an example of frontier-based exploration. 
The other method is a generalized Voronoi graph. We've talked about Voronoi diagrams before when we talked about path planning. The robot attempts to build a reduced generalized Voronoi graph as it moves through the space to explore. The robot attempts to maintain a path that places its it equidistant from all objects in its, its senses. And this path is called a Voronoi diagram with a GVG edge. The robot can then later follow this path using any behavior in order to explore the map. Note that the shading denotes an area in the graph that may have not been completely explored yet. So the background color will change as the robot explores the area or creates that part of the map. This concludes today's lecture on map making. Have a robotastic day!